Hey guys and welcome again to A level chemistry and physics. Today we will be covering electric fields which is a rather small topic in the AS level syllabus. This CPT will be enough in itself to cover the whole syllabus and yeah that's all. Let's dive right in. So electric fields. So these are a few basic rules we need to keep in mind while you study this entire chapter. First thing is that objects are usually neutral in nature unless an action to charge them is performed on them such as rubbing them against another material or inducing to induce charge via friction right so generally we know that all objects in our vicinity are usually neutral any piece of paper we touch bed a mattress or shoes so on and so forth although sometimes we experience static when we rub our uh, fingers or our hands against a piece of paper and so on this piece of paper or a ruler for example then we experience static attraction repulsion so objects are usually neutral in nature there there are obviously only two types of charge positive and negative and the basic rule that opposite charges attract like charges repel also holds true and this the fourth point is important that a charged object can attract an uncharged object as a result of electrostatic induction how this happens we'll come to later on So how does an object generate charge? So as you are aware, all atoms are made of the three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons and electrons. In the center, as we have studied before in our particle physics classes, is that protons and neutrons are held together in the center by the strong nuclear force and are therefore immovable. They are inseparable and they cannot be removed from an atom at all. The electrons on the other hand are in the orbit around the new the nucleus so and the electrons have a charge of minus one the protons have a charge of plus one and in a neutral atom they are always equal hence having a net charge of zero so the electrons are always equal to protons in a neutral atom so the electrons as i said are always in orbit around the nucleus right because they are in orbit they are held in place only by weak forces of attraction which are the electrostatic forces and they are hence much easier to remove or remove or add to the atom as compared to the protons and neutrons. Therefore, all positive or negative charge is generated only by either the addition or subtraction of electrons. A surplus of electrons, that is greater electrons than protons, gives a negative charge, and a deficit of electrons, that is less electrons than protons, gives a positive charge. So, just to sum it up, electrons are the only electrons are responsible for electrostatic charge. Protons and neutrons have no role to play. So generating charge via friction. So we've probably done this in school sometimes where we rub a ruler against a surface and then hold it up in, uh, above pieces of paper and we see that the pieces of paper begin to stand up. This is again get generating charge via friction. So when one object is rubbed against another, there are, and continuously rubbed against another over a period of time what happens is some of the electrons from one of the one object will get transferred to another which one will it get transferred to is a different issue and that is not a part of our syllabus however if you want you can look it up but the electrons get transferred from one object to the other making one object positively charged another object negatively charged and therefore generating a force of attraction between them do note that if they're oppositely charged and then you bring them back to contact again without rubbing them further, the charges will again neutralize because the electrons will move to the body which is positively charged generating an overall neutral charge. So you charge them via friction, separate them and bring them back again, they will again neutralize all charge. This is known as generating charge via friction. So this is the diagram which will and we'll talk about how a charged object attracts an uncharged object. So over here if you see this rod is already been negatively charged. A negative charge has already been put on this rod. This other rod is essentially neutral in nature because the overall charge is, is zero. That means there are I think six positive charges, six negative charges generating an overall charge of zero. However, this rod will still attract the rod which is overall neutral. This is because as we've seen that the electrons can be moved very easily. When this rod comes close to this overall neutral rod, it pushes 
it repels the electrons present on this side towards the farther end towards the farther end which is end b so when the electrons move away from end a and towards end b an overall positive charge remains on end a and because this end is positive and the rod is negative this generates a force of attraction between the two <coughs> so this is what leads to attraction between a charge and uncharged object because the electrons are easily moved to either the opposite side or stay towards one side where they generate attraction so an uncharged object will always have a force of attraction to a charged object they are they can never repel one another and this process as it is written is known as electrostatic induction so defining an electric field this image is what an electric field looks like an electric field is defined as a region in which an electric charge experiences a force okay so if there is a region in which you just drop a positive electric charge and it begins to move or experiences a force that means there is an electric field present in the vicinity Now we'll talk about the types of electric fields. So the first type is a uniform electric field. A uniform electric field is one where a charge will experience the same force at all points within the electric field. So, or in essence, the, in elect the electric field strength will be the same on all points. Another way of defining a uniform electric field is one where the electric field lines are uniformly distributed. As we've heard from before, probably in the form of magnetic field lines, these field lines are indicative of force and direction. That means if the lines, the magnetic or the electric field lines are much closer together, there the strength of the field is strong. And if they're further apart, the, the electric or magnetic field is weak. And of course, the field lines have direction, indicating the direction in which a positive charge will move if placed there without any external force. So a uniform electric field is where the electric field lines are uniformly distributed throughout. An example of a uniform electric field is one which we saw, which is one between two parallel plates which are oppositely charged. So I'll, I'll go back to this. This structure is in this setup is an example of a uniform electric field. As you'll see, or uh, it's not a hundred percent uniform. There's no such thing as a fully uniform magnetic field, but this comes very close to the description because if you'll see between the two plates, most of the magnetic field lines are parallel and equidistant. So in between these two plates, we can essentially and safely say that the electric field is uniform in nature. Also, quick note, the electric field lines indicate direction of a unit positive charge. So if we, so the, these, the direction shown by the field lines is the direction in which a positive charge will move. So the other charge we have is obviously a negative one, which will move in the opposite direction. These field lines indicate the direction of movement of a positive charge. This is important to keep in mind because the positive charge is a reference point. And this is another uh, field, electric field in our syllabus, which is single, isolated, positive, and negative charges. So again, we have to keep in mind that the test charge in this case is a positive one. So on the left, we have a single, isolated, positive charge. You see all the field lines are pointing outwards. This seems correct as it fits in with our logical explanation, right? If you were to place a positive charge close to a positive charge, they would repel. Hence, any positive charge in this field should move outward. And therefore, this electric field of a positive charge is known as a radially outward electric field. Coming to an, a negative charge, this, is, this will obviously be completely opposite because a positive charge will attract a negative charge. And in this case, therefore, the magnetic field lines are towards the negative charge. Hence, this electric field is known as a radially inward field. They are radial in nature because they seem to be originating from a single point and equidist uh, and are either outwards or inwards along the same angle. That is, the angle between any two electric field lines is almost identical. 
therefore they are known as radial electric fields one is radially outward one is radially inward electric field between two oppositely charged particles right so this is an example of a typical electric field where there is one positive charge one negative charge all magnetic field lines move from the positive to the negative right this makes sense because any positive charge will be repelled by another positive charge and attracted towards the negative charge so if we place a positive charge right here it will be repelled by this positive charge move outwards and further be attracted by this negative charge so all magnetic field all electric field lines i'm sorry will move from a positive charge to a negative charge I'm sorry. So electric field between two particles with identical charge. Now this is important. So if there are two particles, if there are two solitary charges with identical charge, that is both positive or both negative, they will obviously be uh, repulsive in nature, right? Like charges repel. So as you can see from the electric field lines, they essentially move away from each other. And there is this region in the middle, which you can see where there is not a single electric field line. That is, if you were to place any charge in the field where there is no uh, electric field line, it will experience zero force, zero. This is known as the neutral point. All this area where there is no charge, there is no force experienced by any charge is known as a neutral point. For those of you who understand perpendicular bisectors, all the points where a charge will not experience a force in such an electric field will be the perpendicular bisector between these two charges. So perpendicular bisector will be somewhere here. And here, as you can see, there is no electric field line, hence no force. All right. Now we come to another aspect of electric fields known as electric field strength. So definition. An electric field strength is defined as the force experienced per unit positive charge at a point in an electric field. Okay, so from this definition, it is easy to derive an equation force per unit charge, right? So, electric field strength is the force experienced by a charge divided by the charge of the test charge in hand. And from the same formula, we can derive that the SI unit of electric field strength is Newton per Coulomb as neutral, Newton is the SI unit of force and Coulomb is the SI unit of charge. So how do we define an electric field? How do, how do we calculate the electric field strength for a uniform field? Okay, this is important as this comes a lot in the structured dynamic MCQ papers. So we know from before that a uniform field can be set up using two parallel and oppositely charged plates, right? As you can see in the diagram on the right. In this setup, there are only two variables we can control. The voltage between the, the two plates and the distance between them. So there is, these are the only two variables in hand. Now, if just by logical thinking, if we increase the voltage between the two or we increase the potential difference between the two, the electric field strength will rise, right? And if we increase the distance between these two plates, the electric field strength will reduce. Therefore, the electric field strength is directly proportional to the potential difference between the plates, but inversely proportional to the distance between them. Therefore, we can derive an equation for the electric field strength of a uniform field, which is given by E is equal to V over D, where V is the potential difference and D is the distance between them. Again, you can derive the unit from this. V is volts, D is meters, so it will be volt per meter. And this formula is very important. It comes a lot in the papers. Okay, so I have to declare that I took this from the AS and A-level course book for physics because I was unable to form the fractional um, bits where we had to derive the equations. So I thought it would be best if I just pick this up and put it in the uh, PPT. This is actually from the AS and A-level course book, which is an okay book, but it does not cover everything that is needed for the syllabus. So if you want, you can check that one out, that book out. So we have come here to deriving the force on a charge. Now we can calculate the force on a charge given in the uniform field between the two plates, right? So we have two equations for electric field strength. One, 
is the is the equation that applies to all e is equal to f over q then we have one equation for the strength of a uniform electric field e is equal to v over d now many of you notice the minus sign which i did not include over there for the purposes of the es level syllabus you do not need to know why the minus sign is there however if you're interested you can search it up on google and you'll get a very easy and straightforward answer okay so e is equal to f over q and e is equal to minus v over d we can equate both of these equations right f over q is equal to v over d and make f the subject of this equation so f will be equal to minus q v over d and then as you know if you're deriving the force of a unit electron unit negative charge or an electron it has a charge of minus e so f will be equal to e v over d that both the derivation and the equation itself are very important because this is just a logical thinking and sometimes there may be derivation questions in the paper itself do remember that v over d is not a universal equation it only holds true for uniform electric fields if you're faced with a question where it is a non-uniform electric field you can only apply the equation f over q if it is a uniform electric field you can apply all the other equations as well right guys so this is the end that is all you need to know for the as level syllabus of course there are many questions you should go through practice so on and so forth and so this is all for electric fields i was i still have to think about what other topic i should cover if you have any suggestions leave them down in the comments below and yeah thank you for tuning in